Hello, this is uh, Denise Cook here again with uh, my podcast, Conversations on the Mind. We're going to be joined again by Rocco Van Schalkwijk, um, who's going to talk to us today about the uneasy road to artificial general intelligence. And so we're very excited to have him here on the podcast once again to talk about how his model of his mathematical model of the mind fits in with um, how people are currently viewing artificial general intelligence. So welcome, welcome Rocco. Hi, hi Denise, and um, like always, I'm very happy to um, to uh, chat about the brain. And uh, when it comes to AGI uh, or artificial general intelligence, uh, it's it's almost a case of you know, don't get me go, don't get me started. Um, mm -mm. There's there's lots to say and uh, lots out there that's confusing people. Um, <clears throat> well, it's definitely confusing to me. So I am a neuroscientist, as I said before, um, trained in um, neuroscientific techniques, looking at rats and mice uh, brains and how neurons fire and how they're connected to one another. So I am far outside of the field of artificial intelligence, but um, my work with you has brought me closer to that. And I've had lots of questions. Like since uh, meeting you, I've been wondering, what is this term AGI? What does artificial general intelligence stand for? What do people mean when they bring up AGI? And, 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 and that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a question that's on, on everybody's mind at the moment. Some people will um, uh, indicate that they know, and, uh, but um, I think it's, um, as, I, as I will indicate, there's a lot of confusion. Now, I think for the general public, uh, or people working in AI, and I think in, in neuroscientists as well, when you say artificial general intelligence, I think you immediately get a feeling from the word general that we're talking about the general environment, not focused, not narrow applications of artificial intelligence. And, and that would be basically correct. So when we talk about artificial general intelligence, AGI, we are actually trying to tell people that there's something different from these narrow applications that we see in artificial intelligence at the moment. Okay, so, so I'm going to stop you there. So what, yeah. what kind of applications are we talking about with just uh, narrow artificial intelligence? So what, is it, what, what on people's mind would they be thinking about? Like Google Assistant, Alexa, are these AIs? So, something like that. I mean, we spoke about chat GPT a little bit um, earlier. Uh, very narrow, does clever things, and some people think it's clever and some people think it's bizarre, but um, very narrow. Um, if you take some AI, for instance, that um, interrogates um, X-ray images and take out <clears throat> patterns from that, um, it's a very narrow application. You can't take that same application that, you know, uh, inspects the, the X-rays and put it in a factory to assemble cars. So you've got these very narrow applications. I assemble a car. I look at an x-ray and I tell you if I see a tumor. I'm chat GPT. Give me a sentence and I turn it back into an answer, also in a written format. Very, very narrow. And from the earliest days, people um, well, uh, started wondering, if we are so clever, we do these clever things, can we possibly extend this to something that can be clever in different domains, in different areas? Um, and it's interesting, Denise, um, when you look at those early pioneers in the 1950s and so on, the word general already featured in those very early discussions they had uh, when they tried to establish the field of artificial intelligence. Um, they were already talking about this, this general thing, you know, we, we, we building little automata, we building little um, cybernetic systems. What will happen if we carry on, carry on, carry on? Will we get to something that's human-like? in its intelligence. Right. Um, so with the, the yeah. these narrow, so you're basically saying that they're, they, they do what they've been designed to do. They can't do anything else. They can't, yes. they can't extend their knowledge beyond um, what they've been trained on. And, it, and these original people in the 1950s, did they think if you just did more and more, because that seems to be what people are thinking now with chat GPT, if you just give it more and more and more and more data, you just scale it up if you had like infinite compute resources, infinite data that we will eventually get to AGI, is, is how, how likely is that? Is that how people are framing the question, right? I, I, no, I think you're 100% right. Um, so so um, from those early days, they were already thinking that 
you know, we see some clever computer programs here. We see some very clever systems. Now, if we start to make the assumption that we're going to get better computers, better systems, smarter, then the question is, well, where will it take us? Will we get to something that is as smart as, as a human? But when you look at GP, <clears throat> chat GPT, um, obviously there's a lot missing. So people people uh, think this is very, very um, close to what a human would do. Um, sometimes people say it's um, it's even better than what a human can come up with. Mm -hmm. um, but we must never forget when we look at uh, chat GPT, what you're looking at are two neural networks, two artificial neural networks. So, 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 and that's it. Data comes in, gets pro processed, gets processed a little bit uh, further, and the data comes out based on, um, you know, probabilities and, and data processing. There is no human reasoning. The, um, the data has got no meaning. The, the, the chat GPT has got no values, um, mm -hmm. and it's not able to plan ahead in future. Uh, it's got no emotions. Um, so it's, 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 it, one must not <clears throat> overestimate it. It's fascinating. I'm very impressed with it. It's, mm -hmm. it and it's fun. <clears throat> so wait, Sorry. just so we go backwards. So just to explain yeah. to people that might not have um, played around with chat GPT or they missed the last three, four months of the news yeah. cycle on like how excited mm -hmm. people were about that. What is it? What, like, mm -hmm. what is it built on? What is it meant to do? Uh, what can, what can it do and what can't it do? Yeah, so 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 Chat GPT is a is a, is a sort of a uh, the final version of quite a, a long evolution <clears throat> or development cycle of these large language models. Um, and one of the big challenges always with machine learning was always to go from a written text language to interpret it and 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 answer a question or or turn it into some other meaningful type of data. Um, so. ChatGPT is basically something where you can write in words, text in a question, and it'll use data based on upfront learning, and it'll extract or precipitate out an answer for you based on probabilistic considerations. So, so it's not reasoning, it's not looking at context, it's not looking at semantics, it hasn't got that capability. It's purely looking on at what I've learned in the past, it's likely that the following word will follow this sentence in this sentence. Right. What, what has it been trained mm. on? So, so do we know. Um, Is that proprietary? Yeah. Do we know exactly what has been trained on, or I we kind of have a guess? In general terms, we can mm -hmm. we can we can just uh, assume that it has been trained on on um, a lot of data from the internet. Um, so a lot, and, a lot and, of words, basically, a lot, uh, a lot of human generated words or mostly exact, human generated. It, yeah, Eventually, exactly right. it's going to be trained on its own data. <laughs> That's interesting. It, mm -mm. You know that the, such a time must come. It will come. So um, lots of data um, and obviously the human uh, element of it, uh, having written those texts, that will make sense. It will be it'll there'll be a logical uh, sense to what we write as humans and what we can understand. And, what and this, so it's kind of working mm, word by word, is that right? I think so. I must also yeah. not extend, you know, um, uh, extend this this, this um, explanation beyond my own um, um, mm -hmm. understanding. But yes, I would I would say it uses the past previous words to de to decide what is the next word based on this upfront learning, where masses and masses of data has been injected into this uh, neural network, um, and it's been trained on on all this information. Very, very, um, you know, energy intensive, um, very heavy, um, large um, uh, computers, um, uh, you know, working very hard, very fast uh, for, for a long time, uh, you know, it could be a year or it could be a year and a half, um, cram all this information in and then even do a bit of refinement. So there's even a bit of um, humans in that loop that would um, come in and say, okay, now you've got a lot of general data from the internet, now we're going to just train you specifically in a few areas and, 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 do the supervised training where we really make sure you get the answers right and, and, and you know, make you even a little bit more smarter. Um, mm -hmm. But in the end, I think the big thing is just it is just data processing. Right. Uh, well, I'll, not... I'll, I'll share one of my experiences just to sorry uh -huh, to cut yeah. you off. But um, so I initially played with it and I was like, this thing's really clever. Like this is going to help me in my research. And so I actually, and I heard some rumors about it being bad with citations and references and possibly not 
um, spitting out the correct data, right? And so mm -hmm. I was doing a project on soft skills and video games. And I basically mm -hmm. inputted some questions. I said, can you spit out the references that are relevant for soft game or that show us that soft skills can be improved by video games. And I got mm -hmm. a list of 20 references and they were all made up. Every single one of them. Oh my just, goodness. Yes. Yeah, so I, I had actually my, assumed that it would be functioning slightly like Google, slightly like mm -hmm. Google search, yeah. and that it would be retrieving factual evidence mm -hmm. um, and giving me information based on that. But it was, it was taking my prompt, soft mm -hmm. skills and video games and improvement, mm -hmm. and it was making various titles that sounded plausible. So it would be like uh, improvement of soft skills with this video game, a systematic review. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like a meta analysis. So exactly like researchers would write their titles mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it was giving me that framework, but it was it, it, the authors, the titles all completely made up. And so well, that, that, that was, <laughs> that was a I've, shock because I thought yeah. that it would be doing a, a much better job, but in areas where like, I, I bet you it's very, it's, it's um, a new field. It's, it, it's hard to find those references, even for myself mm -hmm. using Google. And it, it, it just failed. Like it, uh, and it, and, but it looked completely plausible. On first glance, I was like, uh, you know, I sent this to my collaborators even. I said, uh -huh. look, this is what it generated. These are the references you could look up. And then the next day mm -hmm. I went and I said, oh, I said, I just sent to my collaborators a, you know, bullshit. It just made up yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's a word that people now, you see more and more, um, <laughs> you know, uh, see, see, see the word bullshit. Um, people get frustrated because it, it can be so convincing. And I mean, that's what ChatGPT does. It, it makes things up, um, you know, and, and, and um, it's not like Google, which will fact check something and it'll be based on a human um, information, uh, but, you know. So, so one must just, I think, understand it for what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, it is fascinating, it's interesting, it could be fun, but when you want to use it on a factual basis, I think one must be careful. Um, and just fact check everything that that, that comes out. Now I think um, Chat GPT is, is 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 very interesting because I do think and we can chat about this a little bit later. Um, there is a place for that within the big realm of artificial intelligence and mm -hmm. our way and our this uneasy road to AGI. Uh, there is a little role for Chat GPT, which is interesting. Um, and um, but I think I think first I think we must just before we move on from AGI. I think it's important that we just clarify this definition of AGI yes. because because I still feel that there's some there's something to be said about that. Um, and we need to go, what worries me, Denise, is when you look at AGI, artificial general intelligence, the word intelligence is in there. And that worries me. And let me explain to you why. When the guys in the 50s started the field of artificial intelligence, you know, the, you know, the, was it? John McCarthy, um, McCarthy, um, you know, and he's in his collaborators. Um, it was um, uh, Marvin Minsky and all those guys. They actually, um, this, well, there's John, John McCarthy that actually decided on the term artificial intelligence. Um, Innocently. And this was bringing together machine learning, cybernetics. So the people that were all kind of working on autonomous robots. Um, it was all kind the, of meant the, to bring all of those definitions together to, to to form a group on like how the future of AI would look, right? That that, that was exactly the purpose of that summer mm -hmm. camp in in 19, 1956. Um, of course, it didn't exactly pan out that way, but they did they did coin the the, the name artificial intelligence um, or the term artificial intelligence, and with that they started a, obviously a whole field uh, of 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 uh, interest and uh, and that whole um, industry really but there was something problematic about that so i don't know if you are aware that he was under pressure to bring everybody together and keep everybody happy and also his peers and his superiors um so he he, he used that um, term artificial intelligence not knowing that it's going to cause a lot of trouble going forward um, <laughs> and what happened there was he chose the word artificial so the moment you choose the word artificial which you know means man-made by implication, you are talking about natural intelligence, typically human intelligence. Uh, and, and, and when you use the word artificial, it can only be an artificial version of a natural phenomenon. 
Right, and then we have to confront the definition of intelligence. Exactly. So, mm -mm. so now the problem is he's now nailed down the field, uh, but at the same time now John McCarthy goes through the rest of his life trying to explain that that was not the, what he meant. Mm -mm. Um, so, so constantly he's saying, you know, by definition, you know, artificial intelligence does not mean human intelligence. He mm. keeps on reiterating that all through his life. Um, and that's, that's interesting because what happened then was actually the field of artificial intelligence developed into, um, into two branches. I think this is what uh, Pamela McCorduck um, um, spelled out so clearly. Uh, it, it developed in, in, into a field where people were not worried about how the intelligence was accomplished. That's the one branch. And the other branch was, well, we're going to use uh, human, the human brain and try and uh, emulate that and, and achieve, you know, um, intelligence, artificial intelligence in that way. So there's two main branch branches. And, and what happened was over the years, with these uh, sort of the, the human side, uh, the, the human brain side modeling <clears throat> moving quite slowly, people started to use this um, artificial intelligence term for anything and everything that's clever. Mm -hmm. You know, and I mean, I remember one day I was um, uh, buying a car and, and somebody said, you know, this this car is full of artificial intelligence, you know, and I was kind of, well, <laughs> you know, that doesn't sit so well with me. Um, you know, it's it's got park distance control and can control its, um, you know, the, the air conditioning zones and stuff like that. That's not art artificial intelligence, but it has become a sexy term for people to use just to do any clever sort of stuff. Um, uh, programming, but there right. are these two two branches. So so people say I can do clever stuff. I can I can do intelligence in any means whatsoever. It's not related to the to the human brain. And then there are these people that say, well, let's let's mimic or model the human brain and try and get to this artificial intelligence or this artificial general intelligence eventually. Um, now here's just to conclude on this. <clears throat> I don't know if you know if there is a consensus definition of intelligence. Um, no, I don't think so. People can't agree, and, and no. the one thing they the one thing I no, agree what, what, on, you know, like a lot of people say, it's the ability to learn and to apply that learning to new problems. Yeah, yes, and 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 um, you know, solve problems to to solve goals in in different mm -hmm. environments and so on. So there's different definitions. All of them is have got problems, um, and I. I I won't go into the details, but um, so here we have a problem, a very fundamental problem that intelligence cannot be identified, cannot be defined. We cannot define intelligence, but we've got a whole scientific field called artificial intelligence, right? So be, somebody should have pulled up the handbrake and say, hang on, guys, you know, this is, is it cannot possibly be right. Because now we have scientists having conferences and writing papers on artificial intelligence, while intelligence is, can't be defined. Um, and, and it goes further than that. So these guys start delving into artificial intelligence, and they now start talk about consciousness, reasoning, meaning, semantics. And they all link this to this artificial intelligence field, but they still can't identify intelligence. Um, so just to, to come back to artificial general intelligence, Part of the problem is intelligence is in there in that in that in the term artificial general intelligence. And you've got the same problem. You want to define artificial general intelligence, but you haven't defined intelligence yet. Right. So you're stuck, you're stuck <laughs> in the same system. So, so there's and, kind and of the, like this blurry cloud around artificial general intelligence. People will use it to um, kind of tag to any sort of artificial intelligence, right? Without it actually, nobody really knows what the goalpost is for artificial general intelligence, they, what it they, will look they, like when we get there. Yeah. Um, you know, what, what are the, what are the tests we can use to test whether uh, artificial intelligence is actually an AGI? It, it's very, it's or very, kind, it's kind very, of just shooting yeah. around in the dark. Yeah, uh, that is very true. And that's probably my message today is that it's very imprecise. At the earliest days, people took it as an aspirational goal. And it was that basic old thing of, well, if we can build these clever little things, these little robots, these little automata, what happens if we scale it up? Can we get to something clever like a human? Mm -hmm. What we should do is, instead of trying to define AGI 
in a sort of a definitive manner or a precise manner, just accept that it is going to be an aspirational goal. Um, it's an aspirational construct. We've got a vague idea, like you say, fuzzy, imprecise, of this could potentially one day become like a human. Um, and that's all we need to do. We just need to say, we don't know. We're not going to nail it down now. Because you give me a definition of AGI and I'll shoot a hole in it. You know, mm. it's, it's, it's just, you know, somebody will say it is, well, they started off like this. They said, it's anything, a computer will one day be able to do anything a human can do. And then they ran with that for a while. And then they say, um, no, wait, okay. A, a, a computer will one day be able to do any intellectual learn or perform any intellectual task a human can do right so intellectual yeah. stuff is a very fraction of what a human does right like how how will a computer be able to do something human-like without being embodied right without having a body interacting with the environment is one of the the biggest critiques of um, large language models and how they won't become artificial general intelligence anytime soon or if, if ever because they're confined to a computer program they, they'll have no real life experience. They, they, will, not, they will not have a, a body sensing stuff operating in a 3D environment. Um, somebody might say, you know, put an AGI on the table and say, look at this, I've got AGI sorted, you know, and then you'll say, well, can this, can this thing, you know, walk on a tightrope between, you know, the, the Grand Canyon? Uh, no, 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 but it was never supposed to do that. Well, you know, can it navigate right. a, a maze or can it navigate a obstacle course? Well, it was not supposed to do that. It's 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 human, but it's not that human. So mm -hmm. so you know you, I've, I've tested and I, myself. And I think we have to be careful that we're not. So 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 yes, you said that people ran with the idea of um, transformers and large language models. They mm -hmm. kind of like all the resources have been put into OpenAI, DeepMind. Um, yep. There's the other one. Google, yeah. Facebook and Google Meta. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so they're kind of all using the same strategies, the like big data that's feed it big data. Eventually we will get to artificial intelligence. Um, yes. And, and, uh, right. and, and, and yes, I mean, I mean, I mean, the sooner we realize that that's not going to take us to AGI, the, the, the better, but, and there's a big, but, so I've now been observing the, 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 the AI fraternity now for a while, ever, ever since I finished my model, I, I turned my attention to, to the AI um, fraternity and see what, they, what they're up to. And I've, I've learned, I've now seen, you know, how things happen. So they were a bit disappointed in all the AGI efforts. People weren't really putting anything on the table. And this, these narrow solutions like ChatGPT and all the get AlphaGo and um, uh, all the other um, systems, um, AlphaFold and all these things, um, was stealing the limelight and getting all the the, the, the funding. Mm -hmm. um, but it's interesting how how with 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 AGI, you now need to add elements, which 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 is go beyond the mere neural processing, the new the neural networks, um, and that's that's where it gets interesting and where they where they start to look at what they call symbolic systems. Um, where they say, let's go back to just the rule-based computer programs that we read to, to uh, that we were that, yeah, that we wrote to develop these um, intelligent systems. And now there's an option to combine things. And and here, here's the trick: ChatGPT has done to many people what it's done to you. It's sort of um, impressed at first, and then and then sort of disgusted people. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's it's attracted the attention. And what I suspect the fraternity is going to do now is they are very interested in chat GPT. GPT. They fixated on this um, and they, whether they write it up or write it down, they are fixated on this. And I think what's going to happen now is they're going to start realizing, ironically, what is missing from chat GPT and they're going to start adding things on. So mm -hmm. they're going to say, but, you know, can't we make it learn a little bit? Can't it take cues from people like Denise and say, this is a bad piece of text you've written here. And I will learn from that. That was not right what I gave Denise. So you start. So, to... so at the moment, these large language models, they can't learn. They don't have long term memory. I uh, have they... seen I, I've seen papers where people are starting to talk in that direction. So let, mm -hmm. let, let them learn. You can even um, subject them to reinforcement learning. 
So where right. you say, you know, your goal is to um, uh, to satisfy your, your 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 customers. If they're not satisfied, you learn from that. Um, so there's reinforcement. It, it does learning. kind of have a little bit of context within the conversation. Like you can kind of lead it in a certain way with your questions that it's remembering what happened before in the context. So it does like it is a little bit weird in that it does have this short term memory and, and it can it can build on the questions before it. And that. And and that and that's very interesting. So uh, bits of these functionality will now creep in because people are so mm -hmm. fixated on this, they're putting in the attention. And there's also a, a, a sort of a, a profit motive, where people say, "Well, you know, this if we can make this smart enough, we can we can we can we can sell it and 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 um, capture the market." Well, but I definitely now, think that exactly. We we might not have to. Um... The benchmark for chat GPT might be usefulness. Like it does seem mm -hmm. to have a lot of useful uh, use cases where people have run with it. They're starting uh, startups that, that use chat mm -hmm. GPT, perhaps mm -hmm. not in uh, it's perhaps not ready for the limelight in research capabilities, but at least in terms of, you know, writing emails, writing marketing, writing copy mm -hmm. there, it does have a use case. And so mm -hmm. I think, it's probably disingenuous to look at it and say, well, it's not human like when probably when OpenAI was releasing this bot, it was really um, to, to find out it doesn't have any useful use cases. Can people use it? Will it be can it do work that's possibly uh, tedious for a human to do mm -hmm. much faster? Um, right. Mm -hmm. and, Absolutely. I think they, they what they put out there was a narrow AI. Mm -hmm. Um, application. The intent was not artificial general intelligence, like you know, you know, be just like a human. It was a narrow application, very clever. And people are now so fixated on it that I see, and I predict a lot of them will now try and put bells and whistles on this mm -hmm. and say, let's give it a memory. Let's 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 um let's give it values. Let's give it morals. Or do you think they can do that ad hoc? Can they use the L, the lang large language model and kind of build on that, or is that the wrong path? It's it's so it's so interesting. Um, it's a, like like um, <clears throat> somebody said the other day. Um, it's just an off ramp off the highway from AGI. Right. It's right. it takes the wrong way. It seems like way. it's going to take all the oxygen out of the room. Like yeah, yeah. If if large language models weren't um, popular before, but they were. Mm. Now they're like crazy popular and the funding is just going to be directed that way. It looks like anyone working on a human like general intelligence is even going to be pushed back like into the background, like it, it almost as if they're going to fade away. And, and I mean, and they've had problems over the years, over the decades, um, the people doing the brain modeling and homing in on AGI has disappointed. So, um, the limelight has gone indeed to these narrow applications. And and what I suspect is quite exciting is, yes, ChatGPT might take us off the highway from AGI, but I think it's going to do a, you know, a few um, uh, swirls around the few um, uh, scientific areas and then get back on the on the on right. the on the highway. And it's going so to come back when and... they find out that this won't work in this way. We have mm -hmm. to backtrack all the way probably to the beginning and build it de novo with these systems being concerned about these systems from the beginning, right? It's it's going to teach them what's missing, mm -hmm. and, and and they're going to force and how they them. can't go this way. Yeah, and it's going to give them the energy to say, well, to give it morals, to give it values, we have to go back to the kind of stuff that you and I'm working on, and mm -hmm. really go back to sort of well, well, can we give it emotions? Can we can we right. give it a sort of a reinforcement learning, a reward system? Uh, I know there's a lot of drive to make you know to 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 give it a kind of a artificial morals um where you say i i will give denise an answer but i will not engage in a in a conversation that is you know um politically incorrect or harmful um there's a lot of drive to do that and i'm hopeful and i'm pretty sure this one's going to happen um watch watch me um so chat gpt is going to get a lot of attention steal all the oxygen get the limelight and then people are going to fix bits and bobs around it and 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 put it on steroids and eventually, like you say, here and there, they will have to go back and say, hang on, for this thing to actually reason, we have to give it subjective emotions. It has to learn in a real life environment. So maybe we can even embody this 
-hmm. this language model and give it a, a physical body in a physical environment, I think watch that space. I think that's going to be quite interesting. And that, that might be a, a way back onto the AGI highway, um, or, you know, and whilst the guys flat out working on AGI at the moment um, might not get the funding and the interest and the impetus to drive it forward. These innocent, completely narrow um, language models might, you know, just trigger people and get them interested and get them funded to actually put them on steroids and come back and say, now it's right. got emotions, now it's got learning, it, it's got, um, you know, abduction, it's got, um, it's got uh, inference, it's got, uh, you know, operant learning, um, and it's got senses and it's got, it's got a body. Um, I, well, I think there's something. <laughs> it seems like a roundabout way. So Rocco, I want to bring you back, like after this conversation mm. about artificial general intelligence, and I know we were discussing by email and I said, well, Rocco, you don't really fit into this field. You don't, you're not building something that is, is going to, you know, help a human right today, right? Like, and mm -hmm. be useful, or create copy for a marketing person or, or, you know, bring out the sales techniques and the propaganda. You're not, you're not focused on that. Art Rocco, your, your model is more a model, a mathematical model of the mind. It's built on, you know, you said, you say it's top down. So like, what are the basic first principles of um, how, how the human brain is working? But then I'm reading stuff last night from, um, Gary Marcus and Grady Booch, and they're having a conversation on chat GPT and they are bringing up the fact that these large language models don't have short and long-term memory. They don't have planning. They don't, they don't have decision-making or action selection. And I'm saying to myself, well, this is exactly what your model is, is designed to do, right? It's, it's, it has goals. It has agency. It's picking the right solution based on past experience. It's learning. So, so how do you feel about this? Like, do you think that your model will lead to artificial general intelligence where these, you know, la large language models are actually failing? Yeah, thanks. Like, for how thanks how for do we opinion. bring in? How yeah. do we bring in your model into this conversation? How do we? Yeah. How do we show the people in artificial general intelligence? That, Maybe not the people that are that are interested in useful work, but the people that are interested in modeling the mind and getting us like a human like artificial intelligence. Like, how do we bring you into this conversation? And I, I think I must just, you know, stand on top of the mountain and just scream out to the to the world that, you know, no, look at this. I've got so many of the answers that everybody is looking for. And it's it's so fascinating. So so thank you. Yeah. And I I think um, all the stuff that you mentioned um like um, you know reasoning and long-term short-term memory contextualization um dreaming sleep mm -hmm. dreaming daydreaming intuition um you know subjective emotions we've spoken about that before you know um uh, li literally the fear of emotions um my model produces pain um you know and i can explain how that that works um so literally all those human things and and my aim like we said was never to um actually put something out there that's useful um it was to understand the human brain but i do think once we build you know more elaborate robots um based on on the simple ones that i've built using this model um i do think you're going to find some very useful um things um come out of it but for now, um, I think my invitation would just be to, you know, the chat GPT guys, when I look at them, so much of what they say is missing is provided by this, you know, framework, this, this mathematical model of mind that I've, that I've developed. And I can write, as I sit here, I can so clearly see where I can put chat GPT into my model, safely wrapped with this whole symbolic model, uh, with all the logic um, explaining the human mind, which I've tested and proved in simulations and robots and there's a little place there for chat gpt where i can say you just need to do what you're good at in this one area my robots will sa save uh, associations it'll it'll have a memory database i just need you to do one thing and just pull out using your neural uh, network capabilities your um certain bits of information that I need very quickly from a big database in a, in a very short time. And that's all I expect you to do. And all the other stuff I will provide you with. Um, and and um, 
Because people you seem to say it. that like semantics and meaning come from being grounded in experience and having needs, right? Caring yeah. about something. If you care about something and you want to solve that problem so that, um, right. So like, so that, you know, you, you, you feel good about it, mm -hmm. that, that will tag the environment in a way that those things bring meaning, right? Like food fixes hunger, but we don't mm -hmm. necessarily have to have your robots fixated on hunger. It can be any number of different values, right? It, it, it that's 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 exactly what the um, what what the robot does. So um, you can you can have. Um, meaning when somebody starts to talk about reasoning and meaning mm -hmm. I, I just thought the other day i must write a, a blog um you know called the meaning of meaning because this model so nicely explains what meaning is and, and you're right meaning really in the end comes down to our own selfish needs and desires um our own emotions our own fears um and we contextualize everything in, in that so we say something has got meaning it really has got a lot to do with what is the emotional tagging of that concept. Um, it's not if it if it's just information, it's a dead bit of data. Right, exactly. Um, and then everything okay. has to be eventually grounded by the organism's needs. It, and it, so, it, I, exactly. so you would argue that you cannot get to an embodied artificial general intelligence that can that can um, ascribe meaning to the objects in the world without having these homeostatic loops, these needs. Yes, you know, and, and and I think it's interesting. Deep Mind came with 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 uh, with a paper. I think it was called um, "Reinforcement Learning is Enough" or or something like that. Reward is enough. Reward is enough, you know. And mm -hmm. so so they call it reward. I've gone one step further, and I and I'm breaking it down into artificial emotions, where we talk about satiation. But it says the same thing, mm -hmm. you know. It it drives us, um, you know. Uh, everything we do is 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 is, is grounded in the, this this aim. Uh, this innate mechanisms, loops that drive us to be um, looking for satiation, for uh, looking for reward. And of course, where it gets complicated is people look at this and they say, but you know, real life experience is so complex and so rich that, you know, you can't possibly build this in a little Lego robot or something, you know, so simple. How can that generate the complexity? And what I always say is just go back to a baby on day one and look at what functionality is present there in that in the brain of that baby. And how little information is there, how, much, how little learning is there, a few basic reflexes and a little mind that's ready to learn. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, like we're kind of comparing an artificial general intelligence to like a Gary Marcus, someone that's, mm -hmm. you know, lived 50 years, is like yeah. an intelligent person, has studied neuroscience, the brain, cognitive psychology. And he's saying that this, that's how, that's what intelligence looks like to me. But that has taken, you know, at least 20 years of learning from parents, from peers, or even more, mm -hmm. right? Like, yeah. I think in his, in one of his blog posts, he kind of said, well, once an AGI can learn on its own, can go out and learn yeah. to solve its problems on its own, that's when we know that we have an artificial general intelligence. But, mm -hmm. you know, I can see, yes, okay, so, so, so we can teach the robot to learn how to learn, but they're still reliant on all of human knowledge, even when I'm picking up a book, right? Someone mm -hmm. has written that down for me. So it's hard to see how human intelligence can be separated, like can be individual. Mm -hmm. How it can be separated mm -hmm. from the society that we live in. It's it, it's true. And I mean, if you look at my model and just look at the baby, the baby gets born and it immediately starts soaking up information from the environment at a massive rate. You can just think the baby's eyes just moving from side to side. Gigabytes of data that's just flooding into those neurons um, and immediately started very importantly being tagged by emotions. Mm -hmm. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. Um, what is this pink blob in front of me? Oh, she's she's giving me breast milk. Um, that's good. That's nice. I must move closer to her when I'm when I'm hungry. I learn to move closer to her. Starts as simple as that. But those algorithms are there on day one, and they don't change. I mean, and I've said this many times. Um, when you look at the baby's brain, it doesn't change physically, functionally all that much on the way to becoming a grown up. Mm -hmm. You know. It's just it's that just it, the experience. It just has lots and lots of different it's, tagged learning yeah. experiences that help yeah. it realize its needs when its needs change, when it yeah. has to leave its parents. It has uh -huh. to 
you know, learn to solve the same problems, but in different ways. So, so, so that's, that's, that's very true. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, but what the I think the mistake... needs stay the same, and yeah. that's what your basic code is, right? It's a, just it's it's a bunch of it's... homeostatic loops. It's a you know multivariate complex adaptive system that kind of works. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. what's changing is how much data is in your association database. That that that's that that's it, and I and think that's how it's improving its learning. Yeah, yeah, and if your system doesn't work like that, I think there's a basic problem. You know, if you want to, if you want to, if you need your system to make massive changes to how its basic logic work, um, that's not how the brain works. And I don't think that's a good way to to intelligence. You must have your basic rules, um, your fundamentals. Um, and, and like I always say, you know, emotions, these artificial emotions that we generate, we start off with. They, this is, um, becomes the input. And then the, the cognition is the second part, which 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 tells the robot how to solve the problem mm -hmm. but it's and, it's and what's all... interesting is that from day one your robots are learning they're they're storing a database they're creating memories they, they they're creating memories and all yeah. these memories are tagged with emotions so yeah, that's literally the, key. the emotions are key so yeah. so what's confusing is like to me emotions are very important for cognition to you it's the mm -hmm. same thing but in the mm -hmm. artificial intelligence field you bring up emotions and they think that the only thing that the robots need is to understand how to interface with a human with emotions. So understand human emotions and reflect I, them back. Interpret. But yeah, interpret I, emotions, but they, mm -hmm. the robots don't actually need to have their own subjective emotions and feelings. Whereas you and I would say that this is key to intelligence. It's 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 so important, you know. If you look at Gary uh, Marcus's um, blog post and and and, and talking to Grady Butch. Uh, on 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 the topic, you know, you go through the whole thing, and they'll say all the right things, mm -hmm. but they they never w mention the word emotions. No, they, no, they um, don't. <laughs> you know, so so so, and and I think if anything, and they mentioned uh, reasoning, they mentioned memory, they mention common embodiment, sense, flexibility, uh, uh, yeah, decision making, and even I mean, it's, it's strange because decision making is an entire field on its own, and we know that decisions require emotions. So that's been fair. And you, you from mm -hmm. from the neuroscience psychological field, you'll know that has been established. That yes. you know that 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 is now um, uh, well well can be well defended. Um, but if I, you know, if there's one message to 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 the people that want to understand my model, mm -hmm. it's just everybody's missing this one thing: the importance of emotions. And I can just hear myself saying the word emotions. How people will. Emotions is not artificial intelligence. Don't come with your with your touchy feely stuff here. Um, but we must understand that an emotion is a is a is a is a is a is a cognition construct. It's a it's a thing that is there to work with cognition to provide very important information uh, to the cognition, but to make a decision. Right helps us prioritize it, it gives us our values like everything that these um critiques of artificial and critics of artificial intelligence mm. are bringing up they would all be solved by an emotional robot they will solve so much when it mm -hmm. comes to meaning reason common sense problem um, solving learning problem solving, memory planning <laughs> Um, mm -mm. It's all. You would it's say all, of, all of this is based on emotions, and that's all what of I would this is say based as well. On emotion. Yeah. yeah. So when my robots look at something, every second of the day, everything they, every different scene they look at, different e emotions are evoked and mm -hmm. revoked. Re um, there's no moment when they, when, when this is not happening. And you know what? I claim that a human is the same. So no, if you just look at the I color agree red. With you. Yeah. You have you have an emotion. If you look at the color white, just a blank sheet well, of entire, white paper. The entirety of experiencing mm. your environment is emotional. It's how things are yeah. affecting you. How what's going on inside yeah. my body? What do I need yes. right now? It's all emotional. Yeah, and that's that's your meaning. And um, how come you know, this that, is the biggest blind spot? You you that think is the it's blind because spot. there are no women? <laughs> I I I can't. I think I don't know. I don't know if you've noticed on this. Mm -hmm. uh, this 1956, this Dartmouth. Um, they were, it was uh, all men, was, right? It, it was. It was all men, and um, yeah. you know, I must be careful here. What I, you know, don't shoot myself in the foot here. But mm -hmm. um, we can become very fixated, very task orientated, to solve the problem. And there's an interesting stigma. I, I want to call it a stigma, yeah. where people are trying to avoid seeing emotions for the important, you know, computational constructs that they are. 
in the brain in, in solving problems. Yeah. Um, I think it actually goes back way further than that. There was a, you know, enlightenment and rationality and the, mm -hmm. you know, dualism, separation between yeah. instinct and reason. So this yeah. is going back, you know, hundreds of years where there's mm -hmm. this dichotomy that like uh, emotions and instinct are for the lower classes is yeah. what, yeah. you know, it used to be, right? And we are above that and we are going to be rational and, you know, like men of science and... Mm -hmm. it it's it's absolutely true, and I, I like somewhere I think, also I think emotions in in culture has just taken a back seat for so long. It 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 it's a problem. I, I almost want to compare it with this LGBT kind of thing that we over the past decades there's come this awareness where 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 people you know very brave people stood up and spoke out, and they brought a new awareness to the world uh, of the importance of you know equality and 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 and, and, and fairness. Yeah. that sort of thing and i think it's almost what required in the ai fraternity is almost this thing like guys this is the elephant in the room this is the thing we don't want to talk about let's now meet it and beat it what do we mean with emotions what do they do in the brain mm -hmm. and how do they help planning reasoning meaning context um it's just about everything um, decision making <laughs> um priorities um you know and it it, it, it it's 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 so important that we we have to speak and do you think it's because, it, it, you know, it, it's been ignored for so long, so we don't know much about what emotions are doing. Like in science, if you bring up, you know, there's people studying emotions, but not at the hard, you know, um, yeah. level of neuroscience. So mm -hmm. do you think it's, yeah, like you brought up, it's wishy-washy, it's subjective. We can't, you know, there's, they don't think um, emotions can be studied in an objective way, which I believe they can. It's 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 what your right. research your research uh, shown. Mm -hmm. It's it's certainly my journey, uh, where I sort of untangled emotions and I went all the way back to the basic basic homeostasis uh, states in the brain, uh, and in the body. This is what's actually giving us emotions. It, 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 exactly. It's so, these so, homeostatic loops, this pain and yeah. pleasure, and then kind of the emotions are kind of derived from those basic homeostatic needs and um, the approach avoid yeah. mechanisms of pain and pleasure. Precisely. And I think what confuses people also is the fact that nature has very cleverly decided to pack this emotional information, this approach, avoid behaviors that is so important, have decided to package it into feelings, you know, mm -hmm. and it's it's so obvious almost to me that that's where you would package it. So there's your uh, creature moving through its environment and you want to give it very important information about what's good for it, what's bad for it, what it mm -hmm. must approach, what it should avoid. It's like the emotions are nudging the organism yeah, yeah. in one go way left, or the other, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> you go left, this go right. This is the right way, this is the wrong yeah. way. Yeah. Absolutely, um, yeah. which the cognition bit can't do. No. Okay, mm -hmm. the, the cognition bit just comes and say, oh, okay, you want to go left? I will help you to go left. You want to go right? Yeah. I will help you go right. But the cognition bit doesn't come up with the, the real why, you know? Mm -hmm. Why you why you should be doing this? What you should be focusing on right now comes from the emotions. Now here's the thing. It's very tricky in a human like or a creature like a human to pass that information in into the into the brain without interfering with a lot of the other cognition processes. So you want to make the person or the the human or the creature aware of of what's important, what's not important, but you don't want to interfere in the thinking process. You don't want to interfere in what the the animal is seeing or hearing or smelling or you know so how do you make the animal aware of this important information mm -hmm. and it's so clever you know don't fiddle with my legs or my tactile sense or don't make my hand feel emotions because you know that that's going to distract me but you know what if you pack it in this front area of the body you know up here in the torso and in the gut this area, this is an area where we can afford to send some more information to that's not so distracting. Okay. Um, and, 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 and now you and I walk around with emotions that we feel in our gut and we feel it in our chest and our throats and so on. A warm, I get a warm feeling about this guy, or I get a, you know, I, I, I you know, I'm, I'm worried about this. I don't trust that, um, that uh, salesman over there, you know, he's I just you know i get a bad feeling about him and so on we get these feelings and it's actually a very clever way to send very urgent information very quickly without interfering with 
thinking, other thinking processes with other sensory processes going on. Um, and, and, and I think we must just understand that it is touchy-feely stuff. It is, you know, stuff we feel in our bodies with that, that but guides us. But it's still us. important. <laughs> it's still That's important. the important stuff. <laughs> that is the important stuff. So don't shoot it down because it comes mm -hmm. to us via the gut, a gut feeling. We call it a gut feeling. Um, you know, and I know I've brought is... this up before, but do you really think your robots or do, have you really designed your robots to be able to feel these things in a simulated gut? Is that like, it, are they much, actually feeling? They actually feeling it, but it's mm -hmm. very, very much simplified. Mm -hmm. So Troopy, my little, um, the little robots, I did the simulation simming. I did Troopy, the little, um, a little small little robot. Troopy has only got his whole front body can create a, an emotional feeling and his whole back body can create a, 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 an emotional feeling. So where you and I can, can get more nuanced sort of approach, mm -hmm. you know, this is good, this is bad, I get a ga bad, bad gut feeling. Oh, you know, I like that, what I'm seeing, I get a good feeling. He will get the same, but it's just in the front and the back of his body. So it, it's it's principally, and that's what I always say, my models are principally the same as, as, mm -hmm. as humans. Um, it would not have made sense for me to really try and do it in too much detail because that'll take me 10 or 20 years and not actually prove anything more than what I'm trying to prove. So yeah. that's why I kept it simple. But yes, there's no difference principally between the emotions that Troopy will feel, um, it, although although it'll just be much, much simpler. Um, and I think if I can put that on the table and people can just get interested in this um, and then we can take it that step further. First of all, just understand why I've put it in there, how powerful it is, and let's not discriminate about emotions and let's appreciate how important they are in achieving everything that's missing in AI today. Um, in terms of, I agree again, with we, you. <laughs> yeah. So you know the reasoning and the context mm -hmm. and you know the planning and the prediction and you know just 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 give emotions a chance. Um, and even as I say this, I think it doesn't sound right. Emotions, it's not artificial intelligence. You know, you get people that are fixated on logic and they will they will fight till the bitter end that emotions shouldn't come into mm -hmm. into our solutions. Um, and it's just logic. And then, you know, there's been some interesting conflicts in the past between the people that believe in logic and the people that think there should be some some fuzzy uh, ideas being introduced, like like Marvin Minsky, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, but um, it's, um, yes, I, I, I think that is something that we can really contribute to. At the moment, most of the things people need, what I see missing there is this understanding of the importance of emotions and how and what I've done is I've gone to all the trouble to actually explain how emotions work, put it into machine language, um, demonstrate it in a robot. So it's all there. I'm just, you know. Right. And so just... even if we don't know what artificial general intelligence is supposed to look like, you think that emotions are going to solve most of the, you know, buzz terms that people are bringing out. Long term memory, planning, embodiment, all of these will be solved with emotions and, and and i think there's another 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 element to it this whole model can help us solve a lot of other problems in the ai field which i i didn't want to send to sound too pessimistic but mm -mm. you know denise in the same vein people talk about consciousness they talk about sentience you know they talk about like i've mentioned they talk about reasoning they talk about common sense now all these things are vague unprecise imprecise I don't even want to call it definitions. These are constructs and mm -hmm. ideas people have. It's almost like we're more we still captured in an alchemy of the mind rather than a scientific field. Um, people talk about conscious, you know. They have conferences about conscience. Mm. Uh, sorry, con sorry, consciousness. I, uh, consciousness. They, I get so excited um, mm -hmm. about consciousness. Um, and when when it's different, it means different things to every single person I talk to. Now, take my model. You put the flow chart on the wall, put a diagram there, and I give you a red pen, and I say all of the effects in the human mind will be generated by that model. You take the red pen and you circle mm -hmm. the part that you think is consciousness. Um, and I'll do the same. And then we have a discussion about the bit that's where we differ. Mm -hmm. um, now we can have a constructive discussion about what consciousness, and we can come away from that with a definition. That's what this model will enable us to do. Same thing with reasoning. You say reasoning is this and that, and mm -hmm. it must involve the environment, and uh, definitely senses must be involved. I say, let's put the whole 
Mathematical well, what's sort of amazing in your model is that you didn't code for reasoning. You didn't code for common sense thinking. You didn't code for long term. Well, long term memory was based on the emotional association database. But all of these things you haven't coded into your robot. You haven't explicitly put them in there. But, you know, having a robot with needs that has to solve its own problems, it, that comes, you know, like comes from experience. Common sense is, OK, well, it's, you know, how to solve problems the best way I know how, right? It'll, it, it'll learn. And, and to be you don't honest, even need, you don't need any of these definitions. I know you've talked you, a lot of you, times, like, I don't want the definitions out there. They're all fuzzy. Nobody can really define them. We, we need to define it in terms of my model. So it's basically, you know, this is what I have. These are the, you know, four or five main principles of, of yeah. my architecture, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't need to define those terms. They fall out you, of you, it. You, you don't have to. You, you've got these yeah. few basic building blocks. You integrate them and you let them loose in the environment. Mm -hmm. And the next thing, you've got reasoning, you've got common sense. I mean, I've got daydreaming. I've got sleep dreaming. I've mm -hmm. got um, intuition. Uh, all of things fall out. Language, learning to you know, language. Mm -hmm. um, it just falls out of it, you know. So people right. must please give this model a chance. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's fascinating. So, so how do you bring your model? How do you see um its future and becoming an artificial general intelligence like will it will because right now it, it's it's kind mm -hmm. of um a baby level intelligence or uh, you know like a teenager but how do we get it to what what we what we consider artificial general intelligence like reasoning like an adult human being yeah you, you you've you've used a little you touched a little on the on the word they used the word baby um mm -hmm. and to be honest what i will claim today is that I've already achieved artificial general intelligence uh, in the sense that you know I can I can simulate the brain uh, to a human level, but to a human baby level. Mm -hmm. So what I've done is I've run a system that actually does what the baby does for the first few hours or first few days of its life, um, and really what I see there is everything that develops from these few basic building blocks is there. You know all the all the all the higher level effects, um, and so all I want to do is I want to just scale up this model of mine, and provide it with more um, efficient hardware, and maybe um, use Chat GPT or or one mm -hmm. of his um, family members, uh, and just say there's a small little pedestrian role that you must play in this model, which will help me speed things up, and that and that could be helpful. But the the model is there. The thinking has been done. Uh, all it is up to now to scale this up from a baby is to add a bit of hardware to make it faster and then to train it. Um, right. And, and you and so, so you think by using um, r solutions that are available today and integrating them with your model, you can kind of speed up the process of teaching it to do intelligent things. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm careful when I say I can I can speed it up. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and let me give you an idea what I mean with that. Troopy is a little robot that acts like a baby. It's got the learning and the mental capacity and the emotions of a baby that's maybe a few hours old or a few days old. Um, and a little bit more than that, because it learns to navigate to food sources and find food and eat stuff and, and play and mm -hmm. so on. So um, it, 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 it does that. Um, but Troopy was built, this little physical robot was built based on a simulation called Simi. And Simi was, uh, is a simulation. It's a little 3D character in a virtual world, almost the same as Droopy, where it did the same stuff. So I tested it there first. Does the emotions work? Does it learn how to navigate to the food source? Is it happy? Does it play? Does it learn? Is it scared of the dark? You know, has it got the phobias and the reflexes? So I did all of that testing. And the interesting thing is, so the simulation will not have gravity. Simulation will not have um, inertial effects, heavy body motions. Um, and mm -hmm. that difficult word that I always get wrong, a pro -prior, proprioception. Pro proprioception. Proprioception, knowing yeah. like where your, bot, your, your limbs are in space. That I exactly right. So if you mm -hmm. take those things away, you can take this brain model of mine and put it in a simulation. And now you can speed it up very, very much. You can do it 5,000 times faster than, than Troopy will do it in the physical world because there's no gravity, there's no inertia, and there's no uh, proprioception. Mm -hmm. proprioception. Um, you know, so, so, so you think those things are actually keeping Troopy back? 
It is. That's it is. slowing down his learning. But but there's also. But I guess a... because he ha- he has to learn how thing you know like when he manipulates an object and drops it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So so there's he gravity. Has to kind of learn it, like it, a baby. His little motors work mm-hmm. against friction um, and stuff like that. So if you take that model, you put it in the right. simulation, and you run it five thousand times faster. You can give it the learning that a child gets in one year, mm-hmm. maybe in you know in a couple of minutes or seconds. Right. And so I'd be interested take... in exactly if, if you can take your simi in your computer program and maybe not encode thirst and hunger in it, what mm. what could it do? Right. Have you ever thought about, you know, it could it do any useful work as just a computer program that you've trained up to a certain point of intelligence? It, it, it can. It can. It can. It can. And I've, I've, okay. I've got, yeah, and I've got people actively interested academics talking to me about mm-hmm. um, industrial processes. Uh, things like that, where we say now the emotions are not to eat a ha- apple and and stay fed and drink water uh, and be satiated in that respect. Now it is looking at the stock exchange and deriving data, and you are thirsty for the right information from the stock exchange or the markets or you know uh, even meteorological stuff. You know, is it raining in in Australia? Uh, what is the what is the price of corn going to be? Um, mm-hmm. you, you can make those the emotions of a system, and it can just be a software system, but it takes goes to the same logical schema as the existing uh, robot would would go. So it takes that senses, it senses, it's got senses, so it senses that information, mm-hmm. and it's got emotions built on this is good, this is bad, this makes me happy, this makes me sad. If the you know the the price so goes up, kind of. So is it kind of like building an algorithm? So usually you'd have an algorithm that tracks stock prices, but here mm-hmm. you say, okay, this is what you care about, and it will build it itself. Yeah, you you, with you just experience. Give it, you give it a sense. You give it so a sense. You, yeah, you yeah, give it so, a, something to care about. Yeah. So so the mm-hmm. stock exchange of gold um, is is your is what you care about. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so you you stare at the, you you get that information in and um and you say I'm sensing the gold price, um and when it goes up I'm happy and if it goes down I'm sad, okay. So you learn to start to predict, and be clever and you get fearful when you see it's going to go down. So you raise an alarm, okay. and you if can you give feed it, it with information that can give context, yeah. so it can start to predict when gold prices will go up and down. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it work it works in a virtual environment. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and, and it's a good question because you don't have to get stuck into our humanly way of thinking about the, the physical environment. Right. It could be something that lives on, a, on the server uh, system of an of a enterprise. It's just, it's just th- th- there's no body. It mm-hmm. is embodied, but it's embodied in a, in a, in a, in a, in a software yeah. device, which is it's got its boundaries. It's got a body. It's got its boundaries, but it's a functional boundary. Which, which just says, you know, you take data from different places in the world, from satellites, you sensing that data, that's your senses. Now we give mm-hmm. you emotions based on what is good and what is bad for you in terms of that information. And then we, we, we give you a mission. So we would give a human a mission to say, well, you must survive. This is important to you. You can give the, the exister, um, let's say, enterprise robot a mission to say, you must, you know, alert people when the gold price is it's the right time to buy the gold price get mm-hmm. clever about that learn about that so and there's just a simple explanation where people are talking to me right now and say well we're kind of interested in that that side of things and it's all about business processes and manufacturing processes where you can use reinforcement learning and you give it goals and values and basically artificial well, even if it was like an inventory if we run out of something you order remote i mean i'm sure there's solutions just, for this just, already just, but I'm wondering yeah. if this could be a better solution. Yeah, you can you can let this loose, and 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 obviously the 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 advantage of this is, of course, whatever this little agent, this virtual agent learns, mm-hmm. you can immediately um, implant on another one. So you can say, you know, there's right. your database, your association database. There's everything you've learned. Stick it on another one, or make another one slightly different with a slightly different focus, um, or maybe uh, fixate on a different part of the stock exchange. Um, or, or the markets, um, mm-hmm. and then you put your uh, you, you put your efforts together. So you've got you know a swarm of robots that are getting very clever uh, in certain things. But I think it's literally it depends on your imagination, mm-hmm. um, because this this system will be ideal for things that you know want to learn 
autonomously learn to um, solve problems in this manner. Um, and I think I think the right. your we imagination have to constantly be reweighting and telling it, no, you don't want to focus on that. You want to focus on yeah. this because that's kind of how. So I'm seeing that there's some um, there's some uh, correlation with how a la large language model that like gets given data mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. the humans kind of weight, mm -hmm. you know, what, what parts of the data it's supposed to be focused on. But yeah. in your model, the robot actually has a sense of what how it should be weighting uh, beforehand. Right, you're not you're yeah. not training that ad hoc after the fact. There's there's no training. There's zero training for day mm -hmm. one. When you switch on the robot, there's zero training. You just switch it on. Mm -hmm. but then it starts to train itself. And the cute thing about my robots is, um, you can't say there's no training because they start a training, and when they get stuck, they start to cry. Mm -hmm. You know, they lift the flag and they say, you know, um, I don't know, um, I don't know what to do. Show me, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and that can even be for something like a virtual robot or an enterprise robot, um, you know, or something living on a, on, a, on a production line. You can even even could put a little light on and just say, um, "There's a something has happened here on the production line that I don't understand. Just help me out." And you just show him, "This is the answer there," and he's okay. Right now, I feel better. Mm -hmm. This little emotion that you've created now feels better. So it seems it like better. it will never never be separate from like human intervention. Uh, it it will it will be it could quite easily be separate from human okay. human intervention. So eventually, so once it's event, learned how to solve all of its problems, it's difficult to say. Totally, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's a bit like a human. The baby mm -hmm. is very dependent on information. Little toddlers will cry all the time and ask questions: why, 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 why? And later, when we get to our age, uh, you know, um, we we are more sort of um, adapted to the environment. We we've got less questions. Um, we ask questions because we want to ask questions and it's mm -hmm. interesting. Um, but I mean, we, like you say, we always go back to books to, right. you know, we're internet. always kind of dependent on other knowledge, yeah. external yeah. knowledge. Yeah. So mm -hmm. having said that, if you look at the human, the prehistoric human, there was maybe less knowledge available. So they would have operated in a prehistoric without the internet, without books, mm -hmm. without those things. So the human is perfectly capable of learning as a baby some survival things and then just operate uh, knowing knowing what right. it has learned. And it keeps on learning, you know, don't jump off that rock, it's too high, it's going to hurt you. Uh, don't try and jump to this river, it's, it's, it's too full at the moment. Um, well, it knows if you, if you were to separate it and put it in a novel situation, it will always know that it, when it's hungry, it needs to eat. So how do I mm -hmm. find food in this new environment? So that's where it's using its trial and error capabilities to kind of, mm -hmm. look, I, I, I used to be over there and that's how I found food, but how can I mm -hmm. apply that to this new setting, right? And, and, and that's so powerful. And that's where it's with this. huge because it will yeah. always have these innate problems. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if you look at what the guys are complaining about, is, is, is this whole thing, this word flexibility, and this thing in, you know, in, mm -hmm. in, in, in adaptability, in flexibility, adaptability, you know, in, in, in flexible mm -hmm. environments, in different environments. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the way the whole world, the whole word generalization or, you know, artificial general intelligence come from. It's this whole general ability. And that's what my model is very good at, is the sense that in any given problem situation, it will automatically go and look at the most relevant ideas from what it has learned before. So you can literally take it um, in 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 a, in a, in, a, in, a, in a indoors training scenario, put it outdoors, and what you will see is it will try and use indoors ideas mm -hmm. and say, well, you know, that 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 looks like a, an apple over there. In, indoors, they taught me to eat an apple when I'm hungry. I'm now outside, and there's something on that tree that looks like an apple. Um, and it will pursue that 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 apple. So there's an incredibly good way to use past knowledge to solve mm -hmm. novel problems. Um, and that's this where model, your model shines, right? It, it, it can't it can't mm -hmm. help not do that. It can't do anything but do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's yeah. what it's, it's designed to yeah. do. And okay, so I'm just going to lead us into like the last uh, little bit of uh, questions here. Mm -hmm. So you you are quite confident in saying that um, you have your model or your robots are an example of artificial general intelligence. Now, what we hear about is the singularity, the fear that eventually these artificial general intelligences are going to be smarter than humans and they were they will con start controlling us. Like, well, how do you, how relevant is that conversation, and what do you think about it? 
It's 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 very really re irrelevant, um, Denise, and and uh, I have given it quite a bit of thought. Um, I am a safety engineer, um, so 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 by day, um, and I am um, always uh, very aware of safety safety aspects, um, and um, having built this model, it always been very important for me to um, make sure that there's an ethical basis. I've developed a whole ethical design code for the robots that I build. Um, so that's, you know, always been, been been part of it. And I always always wanted to be safe. Um, but just to be to be perfectly um, clear, um, taking this um, model of mine um, up to um, to scale to human level, It'll take a few, um, the, the, there are a few um, requirements that have to be met to take my model up to the level where we say now it's vaguely, aspirationally comparable to a human. Um, and I've said that in my paper, and maybe we can just put a link to the paper that I wrote. It's a preprint, but it, it, it right. It, we'll put we'll put a link to your paper. We'll put a link to the blog posts and a few things that we've been discussing here today. That, 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 that that'll, be, that'll, be, that'll, that'll be great because it's quite a it's quite a claim to make uh, mm -hmm. is to say that your model can scale up now and nothing more is needed. But what is needed is the following. So we've got the schema, the logical schema that won't change. What we need now is hardware that can allow um, uh, basically not infinite memory, but uh, you know constant memory forming by this learning robot. So we need to be able to just, you know, store right. it somehow. In a, in so a, instead in of a it using big data, it's actually generating big data. Generating big data. Yeah. And that and that brings us to the next thing. It also needs to interrogate that data very quickly. Mm -hmm. And that's where chat GPT, I can, um, you know, pull him into the family and put him there and say, you do this. Um, so so right, you must but also with your model, able... like with your model, searching a database is much quicker because you can, you the emotions make... give you the specific things that are only relevant to this problem and then the impact factor, which is mm -hmm. like um, the valuing or what what solution in the past was the best, will just come up as the first one. So there it's already solving your search problem. That's exactly um, what, mm -hmm. what, 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 will, what will happen. So you, you immediately get a list of most appropriate or more relevant or more helpful associations when you've got a problem. All I need ChatGPT to do is just to go through those and give me the average emotion. So mm -hmm. you've experienced an apple in different contexts in your life. So there's different little associations around it. But I need you, just like it happens in my and your life, to give me one single emotion instantaneously. What do you know? If you had bad experiences and good experiences mm -hmm. with apples, give me the net emotion. Mm -hmm. And so how come your model can't do that already? It can do that it. It seems but, like an easy problem. But it, you mean if it's, there's like thousands and thousands and thousands that, of that's it. for okay. Troopy, it's fine you know because he's got okay. a small little learning confine that he w operates in mm -hmm. and he's got a finite set of associations that he forms and updates all the time right with he has all a these finite emotions. number of sensors yeah. and, and what's uh, sensors and yeah. effectors and that works and that works perfectly and mm -hmm. i've proven proven that but now if we take it into an environment an open environment outside real world environment outside mm -hmm. the lab where it's just constantly learning new stuff, that database will grow. So for me to scale my model up, okay, logic is been... So in our mind, that's just basically this, how we've solved it is by having a billion neurons or, right? And, and, hmm. and you, yeah, and you and I know when you hmm. look at some, an object, you get the net emotion through your immediately. body. Immediately. Immediately. Mm -hmm. And it, mm -hmm. it, it's often, it's often a mix between mm -hmm. I've had some good things, you know, I've, I've, uh, you know, on the tennis court, I've, I've, I've had some good experiences and I've had some bad experiences. Um, so when I think tennis, it's mm -hmm. not just the good experiences or the bad experiences. You get the net emotion. And sometimes yeah, you'll say, I don't really know how I feel about that. It's mm -hmm. a bit iffy. Or sometimes you feel, no, it's, that's bad news. I've, mm -hmm. you know, I don't go close to, uh, you know, that shop anymore. They, 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 they bad news. Um, okay. or, so um, the computational or, power in your model is determining this net emotion. This net emotion because across you across the different associations. Yeah. So if you've had, I get it. Yeah. So if you've yeah. had like thousands of experiences, it's going to take your 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 compute. It's going to take longer. It, 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 that's 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 exactly right. So it um, doesn't it doesn't scale infinitely like a human brain would. 
Yes. So, so mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's something to consider. Um, there are clever things I can do to speed mm -hmm. it up that I don't need to get into now. Um, uh, if you want to stay digital, if you don't want to do this with a neural network, um, you, you can speed it up quite nicely, um, do clever things. Um, you don't need to visit all the associations all the time when it's completely mm -hmm. irrelevant to where you are uh, in your in your, in your your um, problem space. Um, but I think, um, so the logic is fixed. We need something that can store uh, a lot of uh, memories as it learns. We need something to interrogate those um, as it learns. Um, and then here's the last one, the tricky one is to get to AGI, I believe you must package your intelligence into a human type of body. So you need yeah. to have a, 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 a AGI go through a baby experience, a toddler experience, puberty, uh, a childhood puberty, and then into an adult, you know, professional environment. It doesn't seem environment. to be what we mean by artificial intelligence, though, to like actually have a, a computer embodied in a human body, right? And go through, you know, life in the same way. Like, are we going to yeah. be in school standing next to, you know, um, androids or whatever? <laughs> And 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 that's and that's probably the the trickiest one. Um, mm -hmm. But now you can get very close to AGI, uh, maybe by having a modest robot that at least get exposure to playing with children, and mm -hmm. um, you know playing little games with children, and then maybe later learning to do more grown up stuff and have a proper employment, a role in employment, where they have responsibilities and stuff. You can. It, it doesn't need to be a really uh, squishy kind of body, you know, that, that, and for instance, you know, it doesn't need to have a sex. So it doesn't need mm -hmm. to be fail, male or female. The problem is, of course, if you want to uh, give an AGI credit for solving things in a human-like manner, and it has got no experience of the human condition, it's going to get problematic. I mean, just intelligence. I mean, if you just somebody said the other day they want to go back to word work because they miss the banter you know they miss the banter they miss all the the clever guys around the coffee machine and the the, the quick you know witty comments that that flies around and so on and and i'm just thinking you want to build an agi and it, it can't do banter it can't do humor it mm -hmm. doesn't know you know that subtle situation how to interact when you do for instance the turing test and you put a computer and a human behind closed doors you will quickly find out that's a computer. This is this is a human. You know mm -hmm. that's not that 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 he doesn't pass the test for AGI because it can't do banter. It can't do humor. It doesn't know what it feels like to have pimples. Um, mm -hmm. You know. So so I mean that is an interesting one. The anthropomorphizing right. of 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 the the model. But otherwise, know, but right. Otherwise, but I, otherwise, I, I, I think my model can scale up to AGI. Um, the thinking has been done. It's now up mm -hmm. to hardware solutions. And like I said, this, this embodiment solution. Um, uh, and I think we can get very close, very quickly with, with, with that. Um, if only people would, um, you know, listen to, uh, you know, to this, to this model and get over the thing that it's got emotions, you know, don't, right. don't hold it against, uh, against the model that it's got emotions. Mm -hmm. So this has been very interesting. Thank you for discussing with us, uh, Rocco, it's been a, we've gone from the definition of AGI to mm -hmm. how your model could be scaled up to become an artificial general intelligence or whether it is already an artificial general intelligence. And, 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 and sorry to interrupt, um, Denise, mm -hmm. if I, I spoke about the ethics a little bit and, and that we right. want to do this safety. safe and, and, and where is it going? So I think a lot of people are very scared about you know, this whole endeavor of AGI, and it's going to take us to intelligence, human level intelligence, and then to super intelligence. And, you know, will these AGIs maybe take over human life and, and be an existential threat to humans? And all I'd like to just say is like, every single um, system that I design as a, as, a, as a robotics engineer is subjected to law, uh, laws here in the UK and regulations. And uh, they've got a simple, simple approach here where they just say, you want to expose your workers or the public to a new design, you must do a risk assessment by competent people and, 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 and prove and give evidence that this will not bring harm, undue harm, mm -hmm. to intolerable harm to the workers or the public. We can just do the same with AGI. You developing an AGI I think system. The, I think the fear is that it will, it will escape those constraints that we've put on it. 
that that's, that's it. And I mean, uh, people are very strict with these safety assessments that they mm -hmm. do. So it's simple. Somebody's designing something like this and it's leaning toward AGI. The authority should just say, well, you know what? Before you let that loose, like all other engineers must do, bring this to us and give us a, your a risk mm -hmm. assessment and let's discuss it. And if you can't guarantee that in future, this thing can't develop capabilities that could be a threat, then we will not permit you to continue. It will mm -hmm. be illegal for you to... Um, to not maybe work in the laboratory, but to register this as a product that you expose the public to. Nice and simple. No, <laughs> Nobody needs right. to go into a panic. <clears throat> we must just make sure that that- But I, uh, I think also is, the problem is that like not everyone is, is, is uh, not every country has the same laws in terms of AI safety, that you might, there might be more looseness in regulations in different countries and that some people just don't care. Yeah, right, like yeah, yeah, yeah. some people, illegal or not, they're going to do it anyway. And I think, I think, I, I didn't really understand the fear of AI because I was like, well, we can just unplug it. Like, why, mm -hmm. why, why don't we just stop if we think we're yeah. going to be, uh, if we think there's even a small risk in the future that you know, like a, a artificial general intelligence is going to be more intelligent so that it would, you know, exert its power over us and I don't know, you know extinguish all human society mm -hmm. then we should not do it but the problem now is that it has become an arms race it's 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 it's, it's in the hands will, of yeah. different people um you have to kind of trust that those people are abiding by the rules and regulations that you've that you abide by mm -hmm. and this might not be true right and right like now we're in an arms race between google and meta and open mm -hmm. ai and who knows what the future is going to hold in terms of like, will these artificial intelligence, you know, break out of the box, so to speak. And, 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 and absolutely, there's a piece that we have to do, and that is to, uh, to bring that awareness, you know, mm -hmm. to all countries and all jurisdictions. And, and people need to be serious about that. Right. But there is another interesting thing. And just to come back to my model one last time. So I build aggression into my model. So we've got all the emotions and we've got aggression as well. As I build aggression into my model, I can surgically remove aggression in totality from my models mm -hmm. so that my model have no aggression. I can also build an instinct into my robots to care for a human, to care about humans. It's almost de de derived from the mother, baby, um, uh, nurturing, caring kind of um, um, logic. So you can do these things. Now, you know, there's a discussion to be had when we um, go on this inevitable road of building more and more smarter machines for people to understand that you can actually remove aggression in totality. Um, uh, it doesn't necessarily make the, the, the AGI safe, but it, it, it removes aggression. And then you can give it a nurturing or a loving um, approach towards humans. Um, sounds far-fetched now, but um, you know I can explain that. Uh, and it will be one of the exciting things. Maybe we can have a um, chat about that in, in, in future, mm -hmm. just about that aspect. Um, but um, well, I'm glad they... you're in control of your model because who knows what <laughs> how your model would evolve if it was in control by somebody else, right? With nefarious intentions. Um, um, yeah. in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a way, I weirdly sometimes think maybe, may, maybe I've been chosen. Um, yeah, because it's possible it, that it... aggression, you're removing <clears throat> aggression, but maybe aggression is part and parcel of our intelligence, right? Our competitive nature, our you know, our bit, you know, like these models. Now it's human hubris. It's people yeah. are in a competition with one another, and it's it's I want to get the accolades and the rewards for um, building the first artificial general intelligence. Mm -hmm. So from the okay. earliest days, very <laughs> difficult, very difficult problems have been solved because of aggression. And um, before, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So so aggression we need to just and consider competitiveness that. And, yeah. But now we have yeah. a framework. We have a mm -hmm. framework and a, and a solution that I think we can put on the table and have intelligent discussions and move away from this, what I call this, this alchemy of the mind rather than a scientific field. Um, mm -hmm. And we can really nail down things, def define things properly. Um, and, um, you know, I, I invite everyone to just uh, take a look at this existing uh, mathematical model of the mind. And then it'll be very interesting to get some feedback and see what, what people think uh, on this. And, and thanks again. Um, thank you. Denise, always nice. Yeah, always. We always have these thank great you. Well, this, 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 this conversation was more like an overview. It was a bigger view of how your model fits into the field of artificial intelligence and artificial general intelligence. And in the future, we hope to have you back to discuss more of the details on how emotions are actually implemented, uh, how intelligence works, 
and uh, and different. Um, exactly, we're going to tackle each each thing that comes up, kind of one at a time. That, that that'll be very interesting. I'm sure um, <laughs> other, others will also enjoy us when we start to get into the details a little bit. Um, it's equally fascinating. So I'm looking forward to those discussions. Definitely. So thank you very much. Uh, that's the end of our conversation today. Thank you, viewers, for listening, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Denise.